haughtily. I say it slowly because I know what it means. But we are basically seeing the beginnings of it. We are, we are being ushered into it. I believe uh, if, we, if we are not seeing it already, it's, we are seeing the beginnings of it. We are on the threshold of it. Um, one of the things that the Father has shown me, and I am not at liberty to release all the details, but one of the things that the Father has shown me since I was last with you was that there is going to be a, um, a revolution happen in America. And, um, and uh, this happened uh, last year in the month of October. Uh, and um, I have never had this type of experience before. And uh, I was taken to uh, what I consider to be like a library. Uh, and uh, I don't know if he was in heaven or if he was here on the earth. I wasn't told. I wasn't shown. But um, there was definitely uh, a lot there in that library that the Lord wanted me to know. He wanted me to uh, be aware of uh, and tell the people. And, uh, and, I mean, there were so many books there. There were uh, wall-to-wall covered with bookshelves and, and books. <clears throat> and, and there were three men there that began to uh, instruct me. They began to uh, teach me and, and, sh- and share things with me that, um, although I kind of knew that these things were happening and had happened, I didn't know the details. I was not aware of how real this thing is. And they began to show me uh, how methodically uh, these uh, people, the, the, the Illuminati, the, uh, these ungodly, uh, evil, wicked people on the face of the earth, they have historically been behind everything that the evil one has, has done and is trying to do, uh, especially uh, to the children of God, to the seed of, of, uh, of the Lord. And they began to show me maps and share information with me recorded on, on these strange-looking documents. As I began to listen to them, many of these things, I was astounded. And that's the only word I, 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 can, I can put it in. I was, I was amazed, astounded, just like it's the same word that, that the, the Apostle John, uh, you know, what happened to him in the island of Patmos, when the, remember when the, when the Lord showed him the beast, and he showed him the, the harlot riding on the beast, on the scarlet beast. And, and, and the Bible says that he was amazed, he was startled, he was uh, just dumbfounded. And this is what, how I felt. I was just astounded at the brilliance and the wisdom of the plans of this and the methods of these people. How they have methodically and uh, brilliantly brought these uh, plans to pass. And over the centuries, not just uh, over the last few years, over the centuries, to bring about their evil goals. The evil goals of these people uh, is basically to usher in uh, a very dark kingdom on this earth, the kingdom of their God, which is Lucifer, and they are, they are, they're doing everything in their power to usher in their, the, the kingdom of the evil one. This is what all of these things are It's all about. This is what uh, the New World Order is all about. This is what the, um, you know, the, the Ten Kingdoms, the, the map of the Ten Kingdoms in the earth, that, that's what it's all about. The All the Planets was divided into Ten Kingdoms. I read a book, uh, which, uh, you know, a couple, uh, two or three years ago, very, very well-written book on, uh, on, Atl- on Atlantis. And the, it's called The Antediluvian World, Atlantis, The Antediluvian World. And um, one of the first things I realized when I read that book was how much information was contained there that really uh, uh, confirms what the Bible says about all these alien gods, all these ancient gods. <clears throat> what a lot of people do not understand is that um, all these ancient gods and um, and idols that the Bible talks about, like Ashtoreth, Baal, um, you know, uh, Moloch, all these, all these different gods that the, the Israelites worshipped, and uh, because, you know, they were contaminated by all these other tribes, because the, all these other people, which were, you know, the children of Satan, you know, the hybrids and uh, totally demon-possessed, they worshipped these gods. These gods are what the, the book of Genesis chapter 6, it talks about uh, when the, the sons of God came down and, and they, uh, they, uh, they came down to the daughters of men and they cohabited with them 
and you know, sons were born unto them, children were born unto them, and the, and the Bible calls them giants, calls them Nephilims. And uh, these Nephilims, if you keep reading there in, Gen- in Genesis 6, it says that these were men of renown, men of renown. Now, well, we all have studied mythology in school, uh, uh, and of course, Steve Quell is a, I mean, he's the expert on this thing, not me, but I'm just, I'm just sh- uh, sharing that to bring all of these things together, because where I'm going... I need to lay the foundation. And so <clears throat> the Nephilims are basically what these uh, men of renown were all about. They were men that uh, came to earth. I mean, the, the angels came to earth, cohabited with the daughters of men. As sons were born unto them. These were the Nephilims. These were the giants. These were the men that the, uh, uh, the mythology talks about. These were the Hercules. These were the, all these, uh, you know, Zeus and, and all these other gods. And when you, read, when you read that book that I mentioned, Atlantis, the Antediluvian World, all of, these, all of these gods are mentioned. They ruled in Atlantis. They governed Atlantis, which was divided into ten regions, which just happens to be the same plan that these evil people have uh, you know, for the world. They have divided the world into ten regions. The Club of Rome did this, I believe it was in '66. I think it was 66 or 67, they, they, they began this plan. Now, now, this plan is not new. They had this plan for way before. They just began implementing the plan then. And, um, <clears throat> and so all of these things are, are basically leading us into the implementation of the new world order, the, the, the kingdom of the Antichrist, the kingdom of the beast. This is what this is all about. This is the reason why they're not doing anything to fix the economy. They're not doing anything to uh, fix uh, the problems which are uh, basically, uh, you know, upon mankind. They are really uh, surrounding us everywhere. They want chaos. They're, one of the of the mottos of the of these people is order out of chaos, order out chaos, and so chaos is going to rule. Now, there are, there is more to that chaos than people realize, okay? I'm going to share some of that also uh, in this program. Uh, But they believe that out of this chaos that is going to ensue, uh, it's going to uh, lead uh, the whole world into the arms of the the beast, of the Antichrist. The the Bible mentions two beasts. Uh, The first beast that came out of the sea in Revelation uh, 13, and then the second beast. The first beast is a political beast. And the second beast is a religious beast, okay? And uh, both will, will rule together. They will rule together. One of the things that many people have forgotten is that when the church basically, all the early apostles died, and uh, then the, the disciples of the apostles died, men like Iranios, men, you know, all those men that were... Uh, just great man of God, the early church fathers, the Bible talks about them as the early church fathers. When they passed, the apostles died, and their disciples died. Uh, Basically, the church began to be watered down, and it led the the church into the arms of the the apostasy, which was led, of course, by uh, Constantine. And uh, we all know the story, and uh, around the year 325, the Council of Nicaea, when the church was basically um, ushered into acceptance. They were not going to be persecuted, or so they said. And they, they, they basically offered the church, you know, a sanctuary that they could, they could serve God, they could worship. But they, it had to be done on the parameters dictated to them by, by the Roman Empire, you know, by the, by the Holy Roman Empire. That church system later became what is called the Holy Roman Empire, which was a unity between the church and the uh, the Roman Empire. Okay, there was the, the the Roman emperor, and he ruled, you know, the armies, and he ruled uh, the political scene. But the religious scene, uh, the aspects of that religious uh, kingdom, was ruled by the Pope, and that was the rise of the Holy Roman Empire. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we know the story, the horrible things that were committed. Uh, the Inquisition, we all know the, the Book of Martyrs and all the horrific things that happened back then. 
So we're not going to get into that. We know how many of those people died. Uh, they, di- they died uh, devoured by, by lions. Uh, they, they were torn asunder. They were, they were sown asunder. They were uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, tore by the limbs, by horses. They were uh, uh, decapitated. They were crucified. This was the fate of the, the followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, this is in the history books. I'm not making any of this up. And so <clears throat> this was what took place back then, and it, it all the way through, uh, it must have been all the way through maybe around the, the, the 1500s, somewhere around the 1500s, when the, uh, the, the Roman Holy Empire began to disintegrate. Okay? And that is how, you know, the pilgrims came to America, and that's another story there. But this is what uh, the kingdom of the Antichrist is going to look something like that. Okay? It's not going to be the same, but it's going to be something like that. We have seen now the new pope that has, uh, you know, the, the 112th pope, according to St. Malachi. And uh, there may be people out there listening that do not agree with the same Malachi prophecy, they may not believe it, and that's fine. They don't have to. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not a subscriber to the same Malachi prophecy, but I do uh, believe that it is it is accurate. It has been pretty accurate, and uh, according to that prophecy, the present Pope uh, Saint Francis is the last Pope before the return of the Lord. This is the Pope that is going to lead uh, the world, okay, into the, uh, into the one world church. This is the Pope that is going to do it. I'm not saying he is the false prophet. He could be. I'm not saying he is. But he is the last one. He is the one that's going to lead the church, and he's going to unite all Christians under one banner, under one religion. That's already been discussed. It's been talked about. So we know that is where this thing is heading. Uh, this last pope happens to be the first Jesuit pope ever. There has never been a Jesuit pope, uh, you know, in the, in the Vatican. He, so he's the first. This pope also happens to be the first um, Spanish pope from South America, from Argentina. That's the first. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so this is some things that are happening that have never happened before. Just to bring a, a little refresher to the people, the Jesuits in the Catholic Church, okay, have always wanted to take over the papacy. The, the, the leader of the Jesuits has in, 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 in times past been considered and called the Black Pope. Okay? The Black Pope, many have said, and it has been rumored, that he rules from behind the throne. Okay? He basically is the one that rules the Catholic Church, not the Pope, the real, you know, the, the Pope that was elected, but this other Pope, the Jesuit Pope, he's called the Black Pope. Now, they have united both. They have united the Jesuit Pope and the, the you know, the normal uh, Pope of the Vatican. So, basically, they have, for the first time, a Jesuit Pope sitting there in the Vatican. So, they have achieved, the Jesuits have achieved their, their vision, their, their desire, their goal. And, and so now they are there, and I don't know what their agenda is right now. It's, it, they're probably coming up with uh, the plans and the agenda, even as we speak. But based on the things that they have discussed in the last few weeks, they are wanting to, one of the things they want to do is unite all religions. They want to bring all the other religions back to the Catholic Church under one banner. Not only that, but their vision is very ambitious. They also want the Muslims to come back to the Catholic Church. They, they want all religions to really come together and worship God. And basically they're saying that it's the same God. Allah and Jesus and uh, Buddha, and they're all the same God. So they're basically, right now, there is a, 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 an outcry uh, to unite all religions. Okay, so that is happening as we speak. The other thing that's happening is this Pope is open the arms, and he has opened his arms to receive extraterrestrials. And, and of course, the expert on that topic is Tom Horn. And he's done a marvelous job with, um, with his associate, um, 
uh, I, I can't remember his name right now, but um, both of them have done an excellent job in that book, uh, Petrus Romanus and um, Exodus uh, uh, Vaticanus. And uh, I have not read both books. I have read uh, pieces of it, parts of it. But from what I've read and what I've heard from them, uh, it, it sounds great. And so I, I, I totally agree with their, with their uh, perspective that this is going to lead to embracing the, uh, this alien God that the book of Daniel talks about. The book of Daniel talks about the alien God, the, the God of forces. And uh, this, man of being, this man of sin, the man of lawlessness, he's going to embrace him. He's going to basically uh, honor the God of forces. So we're, we're seeing all of this leading into that. Uh, on the other hand, we see the, fi- the financial uh, world right now is really being set up for the collapse of the economies in uh, not only in the United States, the dollar, of course, it's like this article I just got on the email, the dollar is toast. And it, talk, it talks about Lord Mockton uh, and, and seeing China is prepping for the final collapse of America. The Lord showed me this back in the year uh, 2009 when I just returned from a trip to Cuba. Those were the exact words he, he, he spoke to me, which were uh, the, the, there's going to be a super devaluation of the dollar. In other words, the, there's going to be a super... The, the, uh, the whole thing that, that, that I was told was this, okay? They're planning, they're planning to kill the dollar, okay? The super devaluation of the dollar, they're planning to kill it. They're planning to basically do away with the dollar. Now, this was in 2000. And nine, <clears throat> and I began to talk about it. Since then, of course, this thing has become obvious. And so, why is it still uh, holding on? Why is the dollar is still alive? Well, they are waiting for a trigger. Okay, they're waiting for a trigger for all of these things, for all of these things that I've been talking about, Doug. They're waiting for a trigger, and I'm going to talk about this trigger in a bit. Okay. But okay. they're not going to do this thing. Uh, they're not going to force it down the, the throats of people. They're not. They're not. They're smarter than that. And uh, when the Lord showed me this uh, revolution that was going to come to America, okay, I didn't finish that story. Uh, as as I was there, okay, and I was wondering about how cunning and how manipulative these people were controlling everything, the world events in America, to achieve their, their goal. Uh, I was also shown how these evil ones, countless of times in the past, they have concocted all these plans and all these agendas okay, to destroy, to exterminate, and to commit genocide of the righteous seed of our Father. And how they have failed every time. The Lord has uh, foiled. He has and basically destroy their plans, and they were not able to complete it. And this is going to happen again. Okay, No matter how brilliant and how wise their plans were, the Father has always been one step ahead of them. Now, as I was watching these things that were being shown to me and listening intently to them, one of the men approached me and said to me in a loud voice, "Okay, this is what he said, there is going to be a revolution in America. It will usher in the new world order. As soon as I heard it, I was awakened. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when I prayed about this, I began to pray. I began to ask the Lord to show me what this all meant. Because this was just too, too shocking to me. Uh, I kind of felt for a long time that something like that was going to happen. But now I, I had been told. Now it, it had been told to me, and he, I, it was shown to me that this is going to happen. And this is how they're going to bring about their new world order, their new world system. Um, one of the things the Lord showed me was that the American people should not take the bait. They should not take the bait. They, see, they're trying to get the American people to fight. They're trying to draw them out into the open to fight. First of all, 
so that they can liquidate them, that they can exterminate all of those that come out into the open to fight. And they, secondly, so that they can basically establish their martial law and then clamp down and really do what they really want to do, which is <laughs> come against the, the righteous seed of the Lord. So this is, this is what they want to do. And uh, this whole thing with the gun control laws and all these things, this is what this is about. This is what this is about. They're trying to provoke the American people into a fight. But one of the things that the Lord showed me was that the American people should not take the bait, the, the bait that this is exactly what they wanted, but that they should, they should be fought with the truth and with the light. And uh, he said to me, truth and light always prevails over darkness and the lies. And um, so this is a conflict that this nation is entering into. And um, this is something that um, all these other things that are happening, okay, the Sandy Hook shootings and the Aurora shootings and all these other things, this is basically what they're trying to do. Now, this is just one of the things that the Lord has shown me, okay? But um, another thing that the Father showed me, uh, this was in April of last year, and this just happened with, um, with the Sandy Hook, uh, after the Sandy Hook event. Uh, at this particular um, vision I had, okay, as I was praying at night, I, was, uh, I, I started to experience the, the presence of the, of the Lord in, in my room. So as I began to pray, I kept on praying. I kept on asking the Lord, Lord, what is it, you know? Talk to me. Show me. He said to me, basically, he said that two jihadists, and this is, I heard it clearly. He said two jihadists are going to be apprehended in the future. And they're going to be sent back to their countries of origin. When this happens, it's going to cause an, it's going to cause an uproar in the nation. Well, this happened, Doug, on April 15, 2012. On this year, April 15, 2013, is when this whole mess with the Boston uh, Marathon massacre started. And on that date, they apprehended these jihadists. And one of them, they apprehended him and sent him back home. He was yes, from Saudi Arabia. Yes, Al Harbi, and you, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. And you probably right. know, you know more about that than I do. But... Um, this, this, this event happened this year, one year after the Lord showed me that in 2012. Exactly one year to the day. And I believe that this thing is going to be uncovered even more. We're going to find out much more about this, because this is, this is going to be another trigger that is going to cause an uproar, okay, in this country. Now, there is another thing that um, I believe is going to cause an uproar. It's going to cause a lot of unrest in the country. And this is what is happening right now with Benghazi. Uh, there is an investigation taking place even as we speak. Uh, so it's, it's becoming more and more like Watergate. It's not there yet, but it's becoming more and more like it. And uh, this is gaining momentum. This is gaining momentum, and uh, uh, Michael Huckabee, uh, the Arkansas governor, just made the bold prediction this week that he believes that the, the, this, this uh, scandal is going to bring down the presidency of Barack Obama. And um, whether that happens or not, I don't know. I don't know, because I believe that this president is going to be the last president that this nation has ever had. But anyways, this could be uh, a source of tremendous problem for this administration. And this is ongoing. And right now, the, the people are coming forth, the parents of the, um, of, the, of the Navy SEALs are coming forth, the Navy SEAL Team 6 families are beginning to uh, speak up, they're beginning to blame the government for the death of their sons. This is all happening uh, the same week. This same week, it's all happening. And um, so all these different, um, you know, storms are converging, 
are converging at the same time. I do not know what this is going to lead to, but whatever it is, it, I believe it's going to be a fulfillment of, uh, of what the Lord showed me about the, um, the, the revolution that is coming to America. Now, I want to refresh the people's minds, the, the minds of the listeners out there. If you remember, when President Barack Obama, uh, when he was elected president, in his inauguration, the first time, the first time, he used the Bible of Abraham Lincoln. He swore on that Bible. Now, why did he choose that Bible? Okay, it's becoming apparently obvious. It's becoming very obvious. Now, why? Because he knew that he was going to be probably the president that was going to be involved in a similar revolution, okay, even as Abraham Lincoln was back then. We have seen these movies coming out now, the Abraham Lincoln movie. Why are all these movies coming out? We are seeing all these movies coming out. Now. Olympus has fallen. The, and all these other movies talking about the, uh, the downing of, uh, you know, of the government of, of the United States. Why are these movies coming out all at the same time? So we know for a fact that these people... That is how they communicate what they're going to do through Hollywood. They send messages by movies and messages through uh, programs in TV. They communicate their agenda. They communicate their purpose in what they want to do and what they're going to do. So they they have been broadcasting these things now for a while. And I believe that we are very close. We are very close to these things happening. Uh, I believe that this year, and I'm not going to set dates, okay, but I'm just going to give a general, uh, uh, a, a general timeline, very, very general. But the Lord has shown me some things. I'm not at liberty to release these things in detail. But from what the Lord has shown me, okay, in this last couple of months, from this summer, the summer of 2013, on, these things are going to begin to happen. These things are going to begin to happen and other things, which I'm going to share uh, later in the program. So we are, we are being set up for uh, a lot of stuff that um, we have been talking about, we have been uh, hearing about, and many prophets have been prophesying about for a long time. We are right now. At that time, we are at the crux. We are on the threshold of many of these momentous events happening. And um, I hate to be the bearer of this news, but I have to share it. You know, uh, many times people have come against me because they don't like what I am saying, or maybe they did not believe that certain things happen exactly as I mentioned that they might happen. And, uh, you know, this is one of those risks that men of God have to take when they take a stand to share what the Lord is speaking to them. And, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons why uh, Jonah, <laughs> in the book of Jonah, in the Bible, he didn't, he didn't want to, uh, you know, he didn't want to say the things the Lord told him to do because, you know, he did not want to say, you know, uh, Nineveh is going to be destroyed in 40 days because, you know, this is one of the, those things that he knew that if those people repented, that Nineveh was not going to be destroyed. And then he was going to be, you know, looked at as a, as, as a, you know, as a, as a jerk, as a, as a <laughs> idiot. Right. And, and so, you know, the Lord had to bring him into the, into the belly of a fish, basically. And I believe it really happened. Uh, what, 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 what kind of fish it was, I don't know. But I really believe the Lord brought him into the belly of the fish, the big fish, and then there he made his commitment back to the Lord and said, Lord, I will do as you have ordained me. I will obey you. And he did it. And so, uh, sure enough, what he feared happened, which was when he, when he preached, the people repented, the people in Nineveh uh, repented in sackcloth and ashes, all the way from the king, all the way down to the to the peasants, and uh, and the Lord relented, and uh, Nineveh was not destroyed; he was spared. He was destroyed later, much later, but at that moment he wasn't. 
And so this is the, the risk. This is the, 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 the price that the messengers of the Lord bear. Okay? They bear this, uh, 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 this cross. This is the cross we bear, which is, you know, we declare what the Lord says. If enough people pray, enough people repent, the Lord may delay this thing. Okay? He may uh, not, not completely stop it, but he may delay it. And then uh, the messenger looks like a, like a fool, but it doesn't matter to me, because I, I am willing to be a fool for Jesus. Uh, the, the day I was born again, I declared that I was willing to be a fool for him every day of my life, if that is what it took. So I am just sharing that, because I know there's people that are not going to receive this word. They are not going to prepare. They are not going to do what it takes to get right with the Lord. And that's fine. That's between them and God. But I'm telling you, uh, if you're listening to me tonight, that this is not what I am. This is not something that I think. This is not something that uh, I have read. This is what I have been told by the Lord. And uh, so, you know, these things are imminent. And so I just urge the people tonight, okay, believe what you're hearing. I know Doug. Hagman and his and 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 and, and his son. I, I I always forget your name, brother. I, I'm sorry. It's Joe. It's Joe. Joe. My son is Joe. Joe. Yeah. Okay. Joe uh, and Doc have been preaching this thing from the from the pulpit of their radio station there, from their program, for now for a long time. There have been people coming to show, and they have preached the same thing. And you know what? Uh, people are not listening. Many of them. There are even many pastors that are not listening, many preachers that are not listening. There's many out there that don't want to hear this thing, but I'm telling you, if you listen and you pay attention, it could very well save your soul, it could very well save your family, and it could very well uh, determine your eternal uh, destination. So I just want to share that uh, these things are imminent. And uh, we are about to see this thing in Benghazi is going to explode. This thing is going to explode. I don't know what the President Obama is going to do, uh, if he's going to uh, create a distraction uh, because of it. I don't know. Uh, but this thing is gaining momentum. Uh, CBS also published the investigation, the Benghazi investigation. That was also that has had a devastating impact on this administration. It don't matter how much they try to cover these things; they're happening, and uh, it's coming out. Uh, I was also reading today. I haven't had a chance to uh, confirm this, but uh, I am. You know, I, I was reading it. I just, so, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to share it. Uh, you know, and I, I'm just going to tell the people that I haven't had a, ch a chance to confirm it, but. That uh, the the uh, the president Barack Obama has served fourteen state governors with warnings of arrest because they are um, going ahead with their national you know uh, security uh, uh, you know fourteen states they have state defense forces that they're organizing and the president basically is telling them to stop it that you know uh, they're going to be arrested for a crime of treason so this thing is beginning to brew. We have seen how already, um, beginning of this year, after you know his reelection, how many states wanted to uh, you know to to leave the the, uh, the union, uh, and so this thing is gathering momentum, and I believe that what I was shown and what I was told about the revolution coming to America, I believe is going to happen. The only question that we have at this point is how bad. It's going to be. That's the only question we have. How bad is it going to be? And um, I was reading about that, you know, in um, in Second Samuel. In uh, I was I was I was reading Second Samuel uh, earlier today. Uh, that incidents with David, when David numbered in chapter twenty four, Second Samuel twenty four, when uh, he you know he asked uh, Joab, his you know his captain of the host, to go and number his people. And uh, Joab didn't think that was a good idea. So, you know, if you read the whole chapter, Second uh, Samuel 24, 
Joab did it against his better judgment. He told uh, David, basically, you know, why are you wanting to do this, O king, you know? Why do you delight in doing this thing, you know? You're having success, you know? Why are you doing this? And it's one of those things that, you know, uh, David was tempted, and he wanted his people number. He wanted to know how, how many people he had. And anyways, after he did it, after he did it, uh, when Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto the king, that there were there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. It says in verse 10, 2 Samuel 24, 10, that David's heart condemned him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now I beseech you, Lord, take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose you one of them, that I may do it unto you. Okay? Now, this is a pretty tough uh, word. Basically, the Lord told David, through his prophet, you know, Gad, his seer, that to choose between three things. He says, I'm going to give you the choice to choose how I'm going to punish you. But I am going to punish you. Okay? You cannot stop that. Well, this is what I, where, where I believe we are in America. I believe we, in America, Doug and Joe, I believe we are at a point where it cannot be stopped. America is going to be judged. Okay? It's just a matter of how harshly it, America is going to be judged. And so it could be, you know, one of these three things. And uh, this is what the Lord told David. Choose one of them. Okay? He said, uh, I, I am going to give you seven years of famine. Seven years of famine shall come upon your land. Or you will flee for three months before your enemies while they pursue you. Or the third thing is, there shall be three days pestilence in your land. Now consider and see what answer I shall return to the Lord. So he basically gave him, you know, seven years, the very, very long time of famine. Or he gave him a shorter choice, which was three months, where he was going to be defeated by his enemies and pursued. And the third choice was three days, only three days of pestilence. So David said unto Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are great. Let me not fall into the hand of man. In other words, he didn't want uh, for the Lord to turn him into the hands of his enemies. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel. And uh, it, say, it says that, that, that there died seven, uh, it, it died 7,000 of people, of, uh, it, and there died of the people from Dan, Eber to Beersheba, 70,000 men, okay, so 70,000 men died. And the angel of the Lord stretched his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it. But the Lord turned from the destruction and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it's enough. Stay now your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Araunah, the Jebusite. And uh, it says in verse 17, And David spoke unto the Lord when he saw the angel that struck the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray you, be against me and against my father's house. And so that took care of the plague, okay? That took care of that judgment and... Uh, from that point on, you know, the Lord turned uh, his wrath away. Uh, I Augusto, believe we are... Augusto, uh, I'm going to yeah. have to stop you right there just for a moment. We're up against the top of the hour break. I have to apologize to, uh, for uh, for breaking your your cadence and your train of thought. However, we do have to take a break at the top of the hour for about three and a half minutes. So, uh, I, you, you've... Wow. Uh, what, a, what a fantastic foundation you've laid for the remainder of the program this is amazing uh mr perez i i'm just blown away from this and i know yes, Joe, it is. You, you too 
Um, we can fill the next two hours with me asking questions about what he covered in the first hour. And, uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this, the 8th day of May 2013. I'm Doug Hagman. With me is my son, Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Our very special guest tonight is Mr. Augusto Perez, the appearance dot com the appearance dot com which is the appearance ministries that's his home base ours of course is homeland security us dot com stay with us we're gonna be back in about three minutes with some more just fascinating biblical information about current events hi folks doug hagman here you might know me as the co-host from the hagman and hagman report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines, you just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen Johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile friendly. Follow on Facebook because without America, there is no free world. If you love pineapple as much as I do, I've got some great news for you. You're going to love this offer from Freeze Dry Guy. For the month of May, Freeze Dry Guy is offering the finest quality freeze dried pineapple, a case of six number 10 cans yielding 114 servings at a special introductory price. First quality freeze dried pineapple grown and packed with nothing added. This healthy treat works wonders with salad. It's great for snacking, hiking, hunting, camping, and for adding to your food storage program. And please note that Freeze Dry Guy's foods will store on your shelf for decades. Order now and get free shipping to your front door within the lower 48 states. This special introductory price is good until May 31st. For more information and a free complete product list, go to freezedryguy.com or phone 866-404-3663. freezedryguy.com, 866-404-3663. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't gone to one of our great sponsors, Grandland Firearms, do so. Go to HomelandSecurityUS.com. Click on the link in the right-hand column. It's Grandland Firearms of British Columbia. Uh, Carl and Lori Grandland, terrific people. They've got a wonderful uh, brick-and-mortar store up in uh, beautiful Campbell River, British Columbia, the Canada, the salmon capital of the world. If you're so inclined to drop a line in the water up there, you'll be treated by, obviously, uh, some beautiful scenery as well as good fishing. But if you get a chance, folks, visit their website, which is grandlandfirearms.com. That's grandlandfirearms.com. They've got a full listing on their website of what their inventory is, survivalist gear, hunting gear, a tremendous book written by Carl, uh, a great T-shirt, and anything and everything that you can expect out of a uh, gun shop and a survivalist store. If you can't get up there personally, visit their website and also sign their guest book. Tell them you heard about their, pro, uh, their show on the Hagman and Hagman Report. That's GrandlandFirearms.com. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of this very special Wednesday edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report. It is special because we are joined by our guest, Augusto Perez, a man of God. His website, www.theappearance.com. Appearance Ministries is the name of the site, and uh, he has been a guest before on our show, and we've had an interesting and very fast first hour. Mr. Perez, I want to thank you again for joining us tonight, and if I can, I'd like to step back just a touch and 
mention uh, or ask you about something you talked about in the first hour. Um, you talked about the ancient gods, the, the god of forces, these uh, Baal, uh, Balaam, the Nurgle. The fact that there is nothing new under the sun, we know that these um, rituals, these pagan and occult rituals are still practiced today uh, in the highest levels of government and society. You uh, talked about this pope um, and talked about how this is this, the one world religion will be set up. The, the Vatican, uh, the last pope called for a new world order. Um, we're seeing everything, everything it seems to be in place. Uh, they have the legislation in place here in America to do whatever they want. They have the World Bank set up. They have the UN set up. Things ready to move with their one world government, new world satanic order agenda. Do you see this agenda? And you said that you feel that this the time is, is short and we will see these things happen um, closer than we would like. Um, I guess my question is, we're, are we going to see this happen uh, all at once, do you think? Or uh, you said we're waiting for the trigger, and my, my dad says that also. There's going to be some kind of economic uh, or uh, World War III type trigger that will give them an opportunity because they, we know how they work through crises to pass through their agendas. Uh, do you think it would be an economic situation, a world crash? Or you think that it would be more what you're talking about with a civil war type situation here in America to get America kind of out of the way? Um, what's your thoughts on that? Sure, Joe. Uh, well, I think that um, all these events are going to happen uh, not, at, not at the same time simultaneously, but they're going to begin to happen like dominoes which is going to be one topples another, and one topples another, and one leads to another, and another, and another, and another. And once it begins, it's going to happen very quickly. And so um, it could happen by any of the things that you, know, that we've, that you mentioned, that we talked about. It could happen uh, through a, an economic collapse. Now, I don't believe that that is what they want to do, because they, they are not going to have an answer for that if it just happens, if that happens first. They're going to have to do a lot of explaining. So I really believe that the economic collapse is not going to be the trigger. Uh, it's going to happen probably, it's going to be one of the dominoes that will fall. But um, it's probably going to have to be something like a, 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 a war, a nuclear war, uh, taking place like maybe uh, North Korea uh, launching a, a nuke. And, you know, what, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that North Korea is still pointing their <laughs> their missiles to us. They're still pointed to us, although he has stopped that young, um, you know, uh, Kim. Uh, he has stopped making threats and things like that, uh, like he was uh, a couple of weeks ago. He still, you know, he has not removed his his missiles. That they're still pointed at us, and at uh, Hawaii and at uh, and South Korea and all these other areas. And so, uh, this could be a trigger. Okay. There have been uh, remote viewers. Uh, Ed Dames, who is one of the best remote viewers that, you know, uh, after Ingle Swan, uh, he's one of the best. And he has seen that happen. He spoke about it last year. He has seen uh, North Korea, in a moment of anger, uh, launch a nuclear attack, a missile, at America. And um, this, this is probably one of the things that may do it. Okay? Yeah, when, 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 when that Ed happens, Dames... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. When Ed Dames said that, and he first said that, uh, uh, Mr. Perez, I think this is back like uh, maybe, f shoot, uh, 18, 17, 16 years ago, I I just laughed because I thought, uh, I thought Ed, Ed was kind of off his nut there when he was talking about North Korea and look where, where we are now. So you're exactly right. G go ahead. And, uh, you know, and, and I... You know, I'm not a, sus a, a subscriber to, uh, you know, to remote viewing or anything like that, but it just happens that uh, many of the things that he has uh, declared, you know, have come to pass. So uh, I am not, uh, you know, I'm not um, uh, upholding it. I'm not subscribing to that theory, but I'm not, I'm not rejecting it either. I'm saying that the things that he has 
spoken have come to pass, and this seems to be <laughs> about to come to pass. Um, so that could be a trigger. Uh, the other thing is the Middle East uh, situation is very hot right now. Uh, as I was getting ready for this program, the, there was a scripture that came to my heart, and it was in the first, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, and he says, uh, the burden concerning Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall become a ruinous heap. Well, look at what's happening in, in the Middle East right now. Israel is bombing Syria. Syria just today came out and said that it is going to retaliate to, uh, towards Israel, and that this means war. All, all, you know, all bets are off. So it seems like Israel has ignited a fuse that now is going to take place. It's going to explode. So there is a prophecy about the destruction of Damascus. That could happen. Uh, when I when I looked up the word uh, ruinous, uh, you know, that word ruinous heap in the original text, ruinous means it's fallen, it's in ruin, and heap means a pile of rubbish ruined. So something is going to happen to Damascus where it becomes a pile of rubbish, a pile of ruins. It's going to be totally destroyed. And uh, it could happen now. It could really happen. There is a lot of stuff going on in the Middle East. We are seeing um, Iran. Iran has been supplying uh, weapons to Syria. Iran may become involved. Uh, I mean, this thing is getting hot. It's getting hotter by the day. So that is another uh, possible trigger right there in the Middle East. Uh, another possible trigger is a, uh, a terrorist attack on this nation, which the cell, uh, the sleeper cells are here. They are already here. They are hidden. Uh, they are, all they have to do is being, uh, uh, you know, activated. They have to be activated. Some of them are super soldiers. Some of them are, uh, you know, have uh, uh, sub personalities that, uh, you know, that uh, that they have been uh, implanted in them, and so all all that it takes is a phone call, it's a a music playing or or something, to uh, activate that sleeper uh, terrorist, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of them here in this country. So uh, the Lord showed me that uh, also uh, some years back. He showed me. Uh, Terrorist attacks on this nation, and uh, it's in it's on our website on the under the um, under the you know on the page of dreams and visions, and uh, this is going to happen. I, I saw in, in one of the visions that the father gave me, at least six or seven cities were destroyed. I was I was shown in a TV, I was watching like a something like a TV, and uh, I saw in the TV. Uh, this thing, these scenes playing out, and I saw reporters reporting, uh, you know, uh, uh, detonations, nuclear explosions in the, in cities, and they were reporting uh, the destruction and how many dead were there, and, and they <clears throat> the scene changed from city to city. They reported from several cities. I, I I will show this, so I know this is going to happen. So that could be another trigger. Any one of these things could very easily uh, bring about the collapse of the economy and martial law, okay? Any and probably all of it. We may see all of these things happening uh, one after another and after another because, uh, I mean, just to give you a, like one, uh, just one possible scenario, if uh, North Korea attacks the United States, okay, Let's say it just is able to take out just one city, okay? Let's, let's just say they are able to detonate a nuke in the West Coast. Just that, I mean, the amount of chaos that that could trigger in this nation, it would be incredible. Look what happened in Boston during the uh, marathon. Just that little, well, you know, they may not have been that little, but they were not big. They were not nuclear explosions. They were minor explosions compared to nukes. Those two explosions shut down the city, okay? It was basically, they had martial law in that city. 
Nobody could leave the house. Nobody could uh, do anything. They had to stay in the homes. The uh, the military began to go uh, to certain homes, search it out, you know. They didn't need warrants. They didn't need anything. That was basically a very small taste of what may happen in the near future if these scenarios that we're talking about do take place. And that would be a very easily an implementation of martial law, maybe not in the whole country, maybe not in 100% of the country, but let's say in major cities in the country. It would shut down the airline flights. It would shut down uh, commerce. It would shut down, uh, you know, Wall Street. It would, it, 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 would, it would shut this nation down. It would literally shut it down. And, uh, and so this is very, very, very possible. This is not very far-fetched at all. So any and maybe all of these things uh, could be a trigger. In answer to your question, Joe, uh, you know, it's not going to happen all simultaneously, but it's going to be like, like dominoes, one after another. All right, and and that 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 answers. Well, I I should say that that's pretty much what is consistent with what our studies, our research, our um, the people who we are in contact with uh, have told us that you know it. it, I've got one particular source who's saying that, uh, and, and it's interesting. A lot of the words you've used are words that come from an intelligence source very close, uh, um, very very high up, I should say, um, that knows what's going on. Uh, For example, um, this, uh, our our globe, you know, going to be separated into into ten, you, as you pointed out, ten, I believe you used the word kingdoms, uh, whereas he was saying that there's a plan for ten trade zones. Um, And, of course, the dollar, uh, that is a really hot-button issue right now because this uh, administration had said we're just going to kill the dollar. You pointed out this, you had this vision in 2009. It was admitted by a senior Obama official and reported by Kyle Bass in 2011. And really, you know, um, Mr. Perez, uh, you know, in, in really in what venue, what circumstances, on what planet does that even make sense where you would have a nation killing its own currency uh, because it would just cause such starvation and crisis throughout the, throughout the, the world. So you, everything that you have said so far is consistent with the intelligence that we're receiving Folks, this is so important. I really want you to, to really take this to heart and certainly take it to prayer. Um, but, but, Mr. President, you've got something on your website here because we, we talk, and I'm going to digress just a little bit here. On your latest dreams and visions, the word from the Lord of 3 12 of March 12th of this year, one sentence. Uh, really, or, or one paragraph really got to me. Uh, you, you said, if you endure to the end as a faithful soldier, I will dress you with white linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. Uh, I had, in, in my conversations with my intelligence insider, he came, he said, look, it's our duty to fight, to, to endure to the next battle, and we will be bestowed blessings with each successive battle that we endure I, I read that and I thought wow um, it's almost as if he was reading from your from your website and, and I just thought how um, marvelly consistent this was or this is we are to uh, we are to um, do whatever we can to resist to put up a fight to to throw a monkey wrench into the plans of those to in power endure and overcome endure. Right. Is is this what you're saying? Yes. Uh, endure. Well, endure really is is a biblical is a biblical term, and uh, it is it is in the book of Revelations. And uh, one of the things that it, it talks about there is those that endure to the end shall be saved. Endure is a word that has to do with uh, patiently resistant, patiently. Uh, Continuing, not letting down your guard, not letting down uh, and quitting, not throwing your arms up and just 
say, forget it, I can't, I can't do this. That enduring means continuing to go forward. The Bible has a term that uh, I want to share tonight, uh, which is overcomers. Uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3, seven times the Lord Jesus Christ tells the seven churches in Asia Minor to them who overcome, and then he goes on to mention different promises. And that word overcome is very important. Because that word overcome means overcoming whatever you come uh, uh, in contact with, whatever obstacles are thrown into your path, whatever things you have to endure, whatever tests you have to endure and go through, whatever, whatever tribulations and things and persecutions and all kinds of things, diseases and uh, every kind of, of situation, problem, obstacle that is going to be thrown into the path of God's children. Uh, the, the word from the Lord is to endure. The word of the Lord is to overcome, not to quit, not to give in, not to give up. And they that endure to the end, they will be saved. They that, they that overcome, the Bible says, they shall rule and reign with Christ a thousand years. So the key word here is to overcome, because one thing is true, and uh, the, the scripture is very clear about it that the kingdom of God has no place for cowards, okay? Moral cowards. Uh, he has no root, no, no, I mean, he has no place for them. And uh, those are the people that just don't stand up for anything. They don't back anything up. They don't stand up for anything. Uh, anything goes. Uh, they don't care about anything. All they care about is themselves. And they will, they will never lift a finger to help another child of God, to help another person. They will never lift a finger to do anything positive. And so this is the kind of people that the Lord says, you know, they are going to be the cowards. And they're going to tr they're try just to, you know, do whatever it takes to, you know, to, to, to make it to be safe. But they, they don't stand for anything. So I, I do admire people like yourself, uh, Doug and Joe, and many others that speak, that are encouraging the, the people out there that are doing the, what they need to do, that are going out and doing the work of the ministry. They're feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, preaching the gospel, you know, healing the sick, delivering, uh, warning the people. You know, they are the ones, these are the people that are uh, the overcomers. These are the people that are really fighting in the kingdom of God. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, you fight with bullets. Uh, fight means, like you said, resisting, just continuing to resist the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, how do you resist? How do you resist the devil? How do you resist Satan? Well, you resist his advances. You resist his trying to destroy uh, the, mor the morals and, the, and, and the, the decency of this nation and all the nations of the earth. Wherever the, 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 the kingdom of darkness comes in, there is all kinds of depravity, all kinds of corruption, all kinds of ungodliness. And this is what he wants, okay? This is what he wants to implement on planet Earth. This is why we're seeing the, the ungodliness that we are seeing in the military. Uh, sodomy, uh, laws of sodomy passed, laws on bestiality passed, laws on homosexuality passed. Uh, now, why would anyone in their right mind pass such laws uh, to affect the military of, of your country, the country that is, is going to uh, keep you safe. Uh, the only thing that comes to my mind is either they're totally ignorant, they're totally, uh, you know, uh, incapable, they're not uh, fit to be uh, in the position they're in, or they're doing it on purpose. It's one of those two things. And either choice is, 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 is uh, either choice uh, deserves uh, court martial. Either either choice uh, can be called treason. If exactly. You're fit, exactly. You, know, yeah. you you are fit to be court martial, and 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 it, you know, it's it's treason. So whether it's being done by by total ignorance or their their uh, you know their their stupidity, or they're doing it on purpose. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'm not going to argue. It doesn't matter to me. Whichever way it is, they're guilty, and they should be removed immediately. And so. Uh, you know, they're not qualified. So this nation is being led by the powers of darkness, and as many other nations are. And this is where what we are seeing. We are seeing this darkness uh, take over the whole world. I was shown there was great darkness coming upon the earth. 
uh, th- that was a, another experience, and I, I, I would like to share a little bit about that because that is going to tie into the uh, the other topic I'm going to share, which are we are very close to, and that is the uh, the darkness that is about to happen. I had a, this experience. It was uh, back in. Um, it must have been. What was it? Uh, let me look real quick here. I think it was 2010. Let, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, in, in in February 25th of 2010, and um, in this particular experience, I I had uh, three messengers from the Lord, three angels that came to talk to me about this darkness. Now, I have never had this happen to me. Okay. Uh, you know, I have had some angels uh, visit me, but, I mean, I can count them in the fingers of one hand, okay? It, it doesn't happen every day. But it has happened, and this was one of those times that it did happen. And uh, this one was so powerful and so important that the Lord sent me three angels to warn me and to warn the people, okay? Now, what he told me you know, one of the two angels, he he did the talking. The other two were there, one by by his side, each one by by his side, and he began to tell me that there was a great deep darkness coming upon the earth. Okay, now I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. We are beginning to experience it, but we haven't we haven't seen the fullness of it yet. One of the angels told me this. He said, "There is coming a great deep darkness upon the earth." Three times he told me this. Three times. So I wouldn't forget it. <clears throat> and then he, he paused for a few moments, and then he said, there is a lot of activity going on in heaven at this time, right now. And again, he spoke this to me three times. He repeatedly made a point that I would not forget what he had told me. Okay? Now, after this happened, I prayed a lot about it. And um, I believe that this is got something to do with what is soon going to happen. Okay, this is being com- this is confirmed in in several scriptures in the Bible, which I'm going to share with the audience in a moment. Soon after that, I had another experience where, in the middle of a night, uh, the Lord spoke to me, and uh, I was like watching outside a window, and uh, I was sitting quietly looking out the window, the skies were bright, the sun was shining, everything was very, very normal, very calm. Then suddenly, without warning, everything began to get darker. The skies grew darker, the the light began to disappear. At first, I thought it was a solar eclipse that was taking place. But then, the darkness became pitch black. Everything got pitch black. It was total, total, absolute darkness. A gross darkness. I had never seen anything like it in my life. There were no lights anywhere to be seen, okay? It got so dark that I was not able to see my hands in front of me. A total terrifying darkness that could be felt. I could feel this darkness. It's not normal darkness when the lights go off, okay? This was a darkness that could be felt. You could feel its presence. And uh, I heard the, the word spoken. Out loud in my spirit, I heard the word ubiquitous, and I woke up. I woke up shaken. Now, I didn't know what the word ubiquitous meant. I had never heard that word. I had to get up, write it down on a piece of paper, and look it up in the dictionary. And I found out it means everywhere. Okay? It's like, uh, you know, ubiquitous means uh, like everywhere. There is no place that it's not there. Okay? Like... uh, omnipresent everywhere, like God is omnipresent, it's everywhere, no matter where you are, no matter where you look, it's everywhere, and um, I believe that, number one, this thing, this darkness that the Lord showed me, has to do with the release of demonic spirits on planet earth that is going to take place with the opening of portals or gates of the bottomless pit, spoken up in the, spoken of in the book of Revelation chapter 9. Okay, this is all going to happen. It's going to be a combination of the the release of the fallen angels, spoken up, uh, spoken of also in uh, in Second Peter, 
the angels that are bound by the river uh, Euphrates. The, the, I believe the Apostle Peter mentions the angels that are bound are reserved in chains of darkness unto that day of judgment. Uh, so this is scriptural. This is scriptural. And these entities are going to be released at a given time. They also, the Nephilims are going to be manifesting. The hybrids, the transgenics, uh, transhumans are going to be uh, manifesting. All these things are going to be manifesting together with a satellite surveillance police state system throughout the whole earth. Okay? Uh, I believe this is what the darkness represents. I also believe that it, it's, it's tied into something else. It's tied into something else that I believe the Bible calls the destroyer, the, uh, the arrival of, uh, of a celestial object which comes near the earth uh, more or less every 3,600 years or so. And uh, I'm going to be reading some portions of, of Scripture and some portions of, uh, of uh, writing from the book called the Colbrin which I, I have in my possession, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting what it says about that and about many of the things that are written in the Bible. Now, the book of the Colbrin is not, a, a, it, it's not in the Bible, okay? It's not in the Bible. It's not a book uh, in the canon of the, of the Scripture. I do not hold it up in the same light as the Scripture and the Bible, but it is a, uh, a historical book written by the Egyptian, uh, the, the Egyptian culture back in the days of the Exodus. They recorded everything that happened in the day, uh, you know, during the Exodus from their perspective, okay? from their point of view. And uh, although I do not subscribe to everything that is written in the Colbrin, there are particular portions of it that corroborates and confirms everything. And I mean everything that the Bible talks about when these events begin to happen, and uh, what the Bible says happened during the Exodus. So I believe that even people out there that do not believe in the, in, in the, in the Colbrin, and they, they don't want to hear anything that's not the Bible, I think you should open your mind a bit tonight to listen to this, because you're going to be shocked, you're going to be surprised to find out what this has to say about the same scriptures that the Bible talks about is going to happen soon. It, it talks and it mentions it in the book of Revelation. It mentions it in, the, in some other scriptures. And so I'm going to read, first of all, okay, from um, a chapter called, uh, now this is the, called the book of the manuscripts, chapter 4, okay, the destroyer. And it's called Man, chapter 3, verse 6. And it says here that people will scatter in madness. You know, this is during the passing of the destroyer, okay? This is what happened when the destroyer was passing over the land of Egypt during the Exodus, okay? What I'm trying to say is that it happened during the Exodus. There have been about 3,600 years, plus or minus, from that time to today, okay? Which is the trajectory that scientists have believed is what it takes this uh, object to make its transit, okay, all the way out into outer space and come back around the sun and then go back out again. It takes it up. Uh, it, it takes this object approximately 3,600 years to do this. Okay, this object uh, called the destroyer in the Bible. Okay, uh, other civilizations call it different names. Call it the dragon. The Chinese called it the dragon. The, uh, the Jews called it the doom shape and the destroyer. And different civilizations call it different names. But uh, it takes 3,600 years for this object, okay, the destroyer, to go around our sun and then go back out into outer space and go around the second sun, okay, or the dwarf sun that uh, is the, the brother sun or the, you know, of our, the little brother sun of our sun, okay, which is out in, in, in outer space. So scientists have basically now in recent years discovered that our galaxy may be a, uh, a, 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 a binary system, which means it has two suns. Okay, so this, this planet is the only planet that does this, is the only planet 
that goes around our our sun and it goes back out and then orbits for 3,600 years and goes around that other sun, okay, the dwarf sun, and then comes back out here. All right. So we are very close to that uh, object coming back, okay? It's, I, I believe it is affecting us. I believe it's, it's what is affecting um, everything going on, the, the, the earthquakes. It seems like every week now there's two or three earthquakes, five, six, seven, Richter scale. Volcanoes are popping up everywhere. Uh, masses of, of land are appearing in the oceans. Uh, the land yeah. is cracking. Mr. Prez, if I may, um, yeah. we saw in 2011 with Comet Ellen and the uh, hype of this uh, Nibiru Planet X, and also in 2012 with the Ma end of the Mayan calendar. Was that a is that was that like the military running these urban operation drills to condition people to be uh, not worry about it, or um, in this case? They're conditioning them to think when people bring it up and say things like this could happen, to just disregard it because it's been predicted so many times before. Um, and yeah, not they're through. using that ex excuse to, um, to get people to not pay attention to this. But the telltale sign that this thing is real, uh, Joe, is how many scientists that were involved in this project to try to find this object somehow have disappeared mysteriously disappeared or died okay why would that happen why why would uh, why would they do this why why would why would the why would anyone deny this type of thing first they reported it many years ago i think it was in 80 1982 i think it was they 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 said it existed they came up with that name planet x then we never heard about it again okay then, uh, you know, many other scientists, you know, began to inquire, began to do tests, and began to research. And then, sure enough, they began to be disappearing, uh, or they were silenced. And so this is a topic that I believe is what made the Vatican put a, a gigantic telescope in uh, Arizona. Why would they do that? What are they looking for? Did they just went through all that expense just... Uh, because they wanted to look at the stars. How about the South Pole? What about the telescope on the South Pole? Why did our government put a <laughs> telescope there? Because they wanted to look at the stars? I mean, come on. A anywhere else in the, in, in the world, it could have been a better place. Why put it on that hostile environment? Well, I believe it's because this object is coming from the South. It's, it is believed to be coming from beneath us, okay, from the southern from under our, our, our the, the, um, the galactic plane. It's coming from below the galactic plane. It's going to go up across, across our galactic plane, and, and it's going to go out again. Okay, this is one of the reasons why it cannot be seen, from the, especially from the northern hemisphere. The second reason is because it is a, a uh, uh, you know, Me too. We're still good. Skype's good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you can hear yeah, us. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can uh, hear you. Yeah. Uh, well, what about the people in our chat room? Can you hear no, us? Audio was cut. Um, we still have uh, Mr. Perez on. Well, we still uh, are connected. Uh, Our call quality is good. There are no prompts. I do not know what could be the problem. Yeah, all of our lights, the, the, the lights that are supposed to be on are on. The ones that are off are off. Uh, the switches are in the proper positions. We're clear for takeoff. And I think maybe perhaps Mr. Perez might have bumped the, his mute button, maybe. No, uh, no, no, no. Every, no. The, the sound went out um, on Blog Talk. Oh, no, no. Well, it says here, I hear Doug and Joe. Just no. Right. Okay. It dropped for a second. It all cut off for a second, and then oh, he slowly I see. came I back. See. And he might slowly come back or not, but he is still connected. Um, we're good on Justin TV, the Hagman and Hagman Report dot com. Spell that all out. Um, yeah, the Hagman <laughs> and Hagman Report dot com, all spelled out uh, in, and in yes, the alternative site. 
uh, to that person in the chat room who answered the question. We did pay our bill. Um, so Blog Talk was in the chat <laughs> earlier. Yeah. Looking uh, uh, into the – there was a little chompiness going on. They came in. We didn't even ask. And I don't know if they were just fixing that or what happened. But um, yeah, it, it's, I'm gonna, it's pretty um, interesting how this does happen. If we can attempt to I, – I, is there a wager that we can attempt to get him back? I'm not familiar with the, yeah. the connection. Okay, Mr. Perez, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. If you can, we can't hear you. Uh, what I'm going to do, if I'm sorry, right, is um, is if, call him back. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Perez, if you can hear us, okay, we'll, we'll send the smoke signals up from here. But if you can hear us, just go ahead and hang up, and we'll, we're going to try to get you back. And we'll um, email an uh, alternative number, or if you can hear us, the alternative number you can call is 321-252-8900. And, and there you have it. Uh, but while you work on that, if you don't mind, I just want to say that uh, uh, you know, if, for the new people who are joining us after the nine o'clock hour, and I want to just say uh, welcome to those people, you know, specifically in Lansing, Michigan, and Elkhart, Indiana, traveling west. I want to say hello to those people in Rockford, Illinois, and Cedar Rapids. Heard from you today. Thank you so much for, for tuning in and listening. Also, for new listeners in Norman and Edmond, Oklahoma, we also have a, well, just like the situation before I told you about, in, in near Lee's Summit in Missouri, there's a diner there that has, uh, uh, there's a diner there that, that plays our program and uh want to say thank you for listening and thank you for hearing the uh or for the uh uh i want to apologize for the busy signal there um what i can do as well here joe while we do this is i'll send uh, mr perez an email it, it, these things do happen from time to time seems like they happen a lot with us and um you know it's just uh uh it's frustrating as heck, you know. Mr. Per Mr. Perez, are you back on? Nope, it dropped okay. off. He was back on, and then it dropped off. Okay. Um, I'll tell you uh, what, I'll call back in exactly one minute. That way, okay. Uh, I'll give it a couple minutes. All but, right. uh, yeah. But, but yeah, you know, it, it is frustrating sometimes uh, to go through this, and, and, and people, I, I get, I get, emails from people saying, you know, my goodness, uh, you know, why don't you get these fixed and get these problems fixed? And uh, it, it's kind of a good problem to have because I did address this on, in fact, you and I did address this on our website where we, we said that the, the audience is growing so much and the the, uh, the uh, pull for the, you know, it's like it's like trying to shove a, a, a whole bunch of stuff through a uh, through a, a small tube. Yeah. You know, hello? It just, oh, Mr. Perez, thanks. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. We lost you for a moment. Uh, but I want to thank you for your patience. Um, this does happen. Absolutely. Uh, it, it certainly didn't want to get you off of your cadence. You were certainly, um, you were certainly on, on a roll there. Uh, if you don't mind, if you can just go ahead and continue with, with where you were at, and we'll just pretend like this never happened. Amen, amen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, like I was sharing before, you know, this this particular object is is has always been the harbinger of of many horrific things when it does come by. Now, uh, I personally do not fear it, and I'm going to share why in a few moments. Okay, and the people of God, uh, the, the the children of the Most High, should not fear it. The ones that should fear it are the ones that are probably listening to this program and are not liking some of the things that they're hearing. And the, 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 the evil people out there that are wanting to destroy uh, this world and are making preparations for the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the uh, ushering of the kingdom of, of the evil one. But they are the ones, see, th those are the ones that should be concerned because this object is definitely... Uh, has always been an instrument of the wrath of God. Now, for people that are not familiar with what happened during the Exodus, let me refresh your mind. During the Exodus, if you recall, God raised up Moses. Okay, Moses was the leader of 
the Israelites, the Jews. God spoke to him through the burning bush and told him he was going to raise him up and use him to uh, go get his people out of Egypt. Okay? Now, this was approximate time when this object was beginning to make its way uh, around the earth. <clears throat> Many of the plagues that took place in Egypt, okay, the turning of the water into uh, blood, red, it turned red, the plague of the locusts, the plague of the um, of the hail, the plague of uh, you know uh, of the of the cattle, you know, sores in the cattle, all of these things, the darkness that took place in Egypt, the death of the firstborn, all of these things had to do with the passing of the destroyer back then, and it says so here in the book of the of the Colburn, okay, which is what I wanted to share, and. Um, uh, what I was beginning to read in the, in the chapter of Man 3, verse 6, it says that the people will scatter in madness, and they will heal the trumpet and battle cry, the battle cry of the destroyer, and will seek refuge within dens in the earth. Now, this is exactly what the book of Revelation talks about in chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. So this right there confirms that, just like the book of Revelation mentions, that this is exactly what these people were going to do. You know, all these mighty men, it says in verse, um, in, in chapter 6, uh, verse um, 15 and 16 and 17 says, And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the generals, the mighty men, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains. It's exactly what we just read here. Okay? That the, the Egyptians wrote in, this, in, this, uh, in the annals of this history book that this is exactly what they did. And he said, And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? Okay? So, this is exactly what Revelation 6, 15 through 17 say. Okay? That men were going to be hiding in caves and in dens. Well, this is what these people are doing. We all know that. They have dug uh, uh, deep uh, underground bunkers, and they, are, you know, they have stocked it with food for several years. Water, medicine, I mean, everything you can think of, every luxury you can think of, uh, all kinds of things that you know, that we cannot even afford, uh, they have it in there. They have it on the ground, okay? Through many underground bases, there are over 300 underground bases in this country alone. There are many underground bases and underground bunkers in other parts of the world. I was just in Ecuador uh, last December, and uh, I was being told by one of the people there that, that there was this uh, Arab, okay, from Saudi Arabia, he bought a big piece of property there in, uh, in, in Ecuador, and he was building an underground bunker right there in Ecuador. So what do these people know that a lot of people don't? Okay? What do they know? What do they think is coming? Okay? And so this is what I'm talking about. They're all looking for something. They're all looking for an object. And uh, this, this, uh, the powers that be, these entities, this, this, this man, they know about this, okay? They know this object is coming. Of course, they're not going to tell anyone. They're not going to let the people know. The news broadcasters are not going to tell the people. Because they would, let's be honest, would you tell them if you were in charge? You, no, you wouldn't, probably, because it would cause chaos. It would cause total collapse of the economy. It would cause the people to go crazy. And that, that would be the end of society as we know it. So, you know, they're not telling. And so what they're doing is preparing quietly, getting all their, you know, their things in order, getting uh, their bases out of the coasts, getting them in, inland, and, uh, you know, preparing, you know, buying food, buying MREs. How many uh, millions of MREs have uh, FEMA bought and Homeland Security bought? How many rounds of ammunition have they bought? Okay. I mean, it's in the billions now. It's in the billions. And food, and, and, and uh, they know what is about to happen. Okay? Seed they bunkers, know it. yeah. Yep. 
they've you been know, preparing it, at, at, at yeah. breakneck speed at the same time labeling the citizens who prepare uh, as some kind of extremist or, or uh, looney tunes but uh, that's beside the point I mean you're right they have a vault that is in I think the south pole of the seed vault that's closed up they're, they're finished with it they're Sealed it. This whole thing sounds okay. like a very bad Twilight Zone, but but uh, episode of the Twilight Zone. But but but, but you're right, uh, uh, Mr. Perez. You know, uh, logically, would you tell the people if this was imminent or coming to pass? I mean, what would? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, go okay. ahead. I'm sorry. So, basically, this is what I believe they're doing. Okay. I don't believe. I do not believe like most people. Okay. And. And again, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. I do not believe that they are planning, uh, or they're buying all these ammunitions and they're buying all these bullets and they're doing all these things just to, uh, to do th- something by force. I do not believe that is the point, that is what they're doing, they're, they're, what they're trying to do or what they're preparing for. What I believe they're preparing for is the collapse of the, the, of the system, the collapse of governments. The reason I believe that is because of what the Lord has shown me, and because of what he says in the Colbrin. One of the things it says here in the Colbrin is that when the destroyer came by, okay, the uh, kingdom of Egypt collapsed, okay? Uh, everything just was destroyed. Everything was went haywire. It, it talks about the, the prisoners, you know, being out in the streets. It talks about all the, the records being wiped out. There were no records anymore. It talks about chaos. It talks about, I mean, uh, chaos in the streets, chaos everywhere, okay? This is what these people know is going to happen. That is what I believe. And they're preparing with ammo, with bullets. They're preparing with, um, with, um, with, uh, with food. They're preparing with uh, underground bunkers to also protect themselves because they know people are going to come after them. Okay? They know people are going to go wanting in those bunkers and wanting to take those things, and I believe that they're trying to preserve, if you will, uh, keep a semblance of um, transition, okay, a transition of government, uh, a continuance of government, I think is the word that it's used, a continuance, when these things happen. But I believe that it's not going to, I don't believe it's going to work. I believe that their best uh, intentions and their best uh, uh, plans, late plans, are going to fail. And the reason is because they have no idea what they're up against. <laughs> they really have no idea what they're up against. And uh, let me, sh- if, if I can, let me, uh, let me just share a few things from here, okay, from the, the book of the Colbrin that is going to just, uh, just shock so many people. It's going to overwhelm a lot of people listening to this, okay? First of all, in the book of Man, chapter 5, verse 1, it says that the doom shape, it's called the doom shape, the destroyer also, in Egypt, it says that it was seen in all the lands thereabouts. Okay? It, was, it said its color was bright and fiery, its appearance, cha- its appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil. Hello? A spiral, anyone? How many spirals have there been taking place since Barack True. Obama was elected president? Starting in Norway the Norway spiral, and after that, several spirals have appeared, okay? So this is one of the signs of this object, okay? And uh, it talks about, it says, it was not a great comet or a loosened star, being more like a fiery body of flame. Now, I have seen this. I have been shown this object, okay? Uh, In our website, is there. It's... um, it's it's one of the last ones I had. It's called uh, the uh, the uh, it's the blue. Uh, it says update. Wormwood appears with two other objects. I had this last year in December. I saw this fiery red object like a spiral, and there's it's it's on our website. Okay, I know this thing is getting close. Now I am. I can't tell you when it's going to be seen by the, with the naked eye. I don't know. The Lord hasn't shown me. But it's getting very close now, and it is affecting the Earth, and it's affecting other planets. 
other planets uh, like, uh, for example, Neptune, uh, Saturn, uh, Jupiter, scientists have reported that they, it's affecting their orbits. It's, affect, it's affecting their the planets. The planets are are getting hotter. I get are, the temperatures in the planet are, are it's, it's getting it's affecting them. It's affecting many many things that uh, it's affecting the orbit of the moon. I don't know how many people out there have looked at the moon lately, but the moon is not the same. The moon doesn't appear the same. Uh, you know, when you see the faces of the moon, the first quarter, and you know the the crescent moon, you see the the shadow, okay, from the Earth, which is the Earth. You know, the shadow of the Earth uh, on the moon. It goes from left to right and left and right to left. Well, you look at the moon now, you will notice when you look at the moon that sometimes the the quarter moon or the, or the shadow is going to go from the bottom up, not from left to right, and from the top down. Sometimes it goes from the okay, like it like if like if we use a clock, it goes from uh, from uh, it goes from five o'clock to say um, eleven o'clock, and 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 so forth. It doesn't it doesn't it's not acting normal. It's not behaving normal. In the book of Enoch, which is another extra uh, biblical book. Okay, it's not in the canon of the Bible. It mentions that the moon will lose its orbit. It will lose its way. Yeah. Many planets will lose its way. It mentions the sun getting brighter. It mentions yes, it a lot of things we are seeing today. And um, I've read the book of Enoch. I think it's a, a fantastic, uh, it gives insight to and expands on a lot of what isn't said in the Bible. But with that, Mr. Perez, we're up against the top of the hour break. Um, this gonna, is fascinating. This is absolutely yeah. fascinating, Joe. We're going to make this a quick break, and we're going to come right back in about three minutes. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report this 8th of May, Thursday. I'm sorry, Wednesday, with our very special guest, Augusto Perez. Go to his website. That is the Appearance Ministries. The Appearance. Yeah. yeah. Wow. A lot of great information there. The Appearance.com. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as a frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines. You just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly. Follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, 
no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this special Wednesday broadcast, Wednesday edition of the Hagman and the Hagman Report. I'm Doug Hagman. With me is my son in studio, Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. And I, I, I'm just very humbled to have with us, uh, well, jo- both Joe and I are humbled to have with us uh, Mr. Augusto Perez. We consider him a brother in Christ and uh, a man of, uh, of immense integrity, character, and uh, just a tremendous man. Of course, his website, ladies and gentlemen, bookmark his website. It's theappearance.com, theappearance.com. It's linked off of our website, homelandsecurityus.com. That's our home base. With that, let's get right back to Mr. Perez. Let's not take any more of his valuable time. Mr. Perez, go ahead and continue. Uh, well, thank you, Doug uh, and Joe. Once again, uh, I'm so glad that uh, that you allowed me to to have this opportunity to share uh, some of these things. Uh, I'm really very, very overjoyed that uh, we are able to do this tonight. Um, these things that I'm sharing, uh, you know, I'm trying to squeeze all this stuff into into in, into the time. It's really it, it takes it takes so much longer to be able to sh- sh- build a foundation. But I'm going to do as best as I can to share with the people tonight because time is getting short and I don't know how many more of these programs we'll be able to conduct in the near future. So I want to really be able to give as much as I can to wake up the people and let them understand what is about to take place, okay? Now, going back to this uh, book of the Colbrin, <clears throat> the book of manuscripts, and, and if, people, if people want to read this, they can get this in the library, I, I, I mean in the bookstore. They can go to Amazon or any other bookstore and they can get it. And they, they may have to order it because this is a rare book. It's, it's not something you find there in the bookshelves, but it, I believe you can order it if you want to read it yourself. But I'm going to be sharing some things with you tonight. And I believe this bears record that, uh, you know, when the destroyer came by during the Exodus, Everything that is written here, okay, in the pages of this book, it talks about what they saw. It, remember, this is not about doctrine. This is not about theology. They are recording what they saw, what they experienced t- during this time, okay? And this is what's going to happen when this object comes again, because it says so also in the book of Revelations. In the book of Revelation, everything that is written here in the Colburn is confirmed there, and I'm going to give you chapter and verse for it, okay? So you can go ahead and look it up. But here in the book of the Colbert, it says in, uh, in Man chapter 5, verse 3, it says, The earth was troubled and shook. The hills and the mountains moved and rocked. And then he talks about the dark smoke-filled heavens bowed over the earth. And a great howl came to the ears of the living men. Okay? Now, <laughs> how many people out there have been hearing those sounds in different parts of the world? It started a couple years ago. It started in 2011, it continued last year, and it continues this year. Those howling sounds, those strange sounds that people are hearing, okay? This is exactly what this says here in the book of the Colbert. It sounded like that. It sounded like, you know, like the, the heavens uh, were just emitting these strange sounds, okay? The strange sounds, and then he talks about hailstones. He talks about awful hail of hot stones and coals of fire, okay? Meteorites. Okay, that's, that's our, this is what we today called meteorites. Back in those days, they said it was coals of fire. Well, that's, a, that, that's what a meteorite uh, is described as, is, is hot stones, okay? Hot, 
large stones or small stones. And uh, it says that the doom shape thundered sharply in the heavens and shot out bright lightnings. Okay? One of the things that this object does is emit a tremendous amount of lightnings. Okay? I believe, I'm no scientist, I'm not a physicist or astronomer, but I believe this is the interaction between this object and the sun and the earth. You know, there is electrical discharges that are going to take place when these uh, celestial bodies begin to come near one another. And so I believe this is part of that. Uh, it talks about here, it says, the voice, it sounded like the voice of 10,000 trumpets that was heard over the wilderness. And before its burning breath, the flames parted. It talks about how it, it, uh, it caused plagues. It caused hunger and other evils. Well, has anybody been here in the news what's going on with the H7N9 uh, plague that is uh, it, it's it's developing into a plague it's not yet been described as a plague but it's really beginning to make great strides in China and uh, many people many scientists are beginning to say that this thing could could develop into a into a tremendous plague and uh, because it is it is go, it is beginning to be transmitted from human to human it no longer is just transmitted from uh, animal to animal, but it's beginning to be transmitted from human to human. So this thing is a, this is developing, okay? It's still, still developing, but it is happening. The book of Revelation, in uh, chapter 6, verse 5 and 8, it talks about, you know, of course, the black, or, the, the black horseman and the pale horse of the apocalypse. It talks about plagues, and it talks about hunger, okay? So those things... I believe is going to be caused the the same thing that caused the uh, these events in the book of the culprit back in the days of Moses during the Exodus. I believe this is going to be the same thing that is going to cause the Revelation six events. Okay, it talks about uh, the the mountains being moved. It talks about uh, the mountains melting. It talks about the the sky itself roar like ten thousand lions in agony, bright, bright arrows of blood sped back and forth across its face. Okay, well, this is exactly what it talks about in Revelation chapter 6. It says that, uh, that the heavens parted as a scroll when it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Okay, uh, then it goes on to say that the earth swelled up like bread upon the, up, upon the hearth. Okay, it says that... Uh, uh, it says that it was described in all, in all records. It says that um, that it, it it when it appears in the heavens above, the earth split upon from the heat. It 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 was it split from the heat like a knot roasted before the fire. Well, basically, what that is saying is the earth is going to open up. There's going to be cracks that are going to appear upon the earth. Well, this is exactly what is beginning to happen. In many parts of the of the world, I have them listed in our website under the end time news. You can go there. You're going to see uh, where the sinkholes are appearing. Not one or two, but now is in the dozens and dozens and dozens uh, are appearing everywhere. The earth is beginning to open up and split in different parts of the world. This this is beginning to happen everywhere. Okay, just like it says here in the book of the Colburn. Okay. Uh, it says, it goes on to say that uh, the doom shape or the destroyer is like a circling ball of flame which scatters small fiery offspring in its train. It covers about a fifth part of the sky. In other words, when this thing appears, it's going to cover, it's going to be like a comet, okay? It's a comet-like object, but it's not a comet. It looks like a comet, and it may appear like a comet. And it's going to take up about a fifth of the sky. And it's going to uh, it's going to it's going to appear with like writhing snake-like fingers upon the earth. Okay, so it goes on to talk about all that. It talks about um, it talks about uh, the sounds that are being heard. It talks about the people being ignorant. In Man chapter six verse two, it talks about that the people were ignorant, and they even the temple seers they were not informed. Okay. This, 
I I would like to compare to to today's prophets today, uh, you know, like the man of God today, the the so-called preachers, the so-called pastors, even the so-called uh, people out there, the you know your your leaders. They have no idea about this. They have no understanding about this. They're ignorant, and therefore they don't know what's going on. They want to blame it on this. They want to blame it on the on global warming. They want to blame it on this other thing, but it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the effects of the uh, incoming object uh, called the destroyer in the Bible. The Bible calls it the destroyer, and so does the book of the Colbert. Um It talks about, it says in Man chapter 6, verse 3, these were days of ominous calm when the people waited, for they knew not what. Does it? Doesn't that sound like today? People are waiting for something to happen. They don't know what it is, but they're waiting. Very much. They're waiting yeah. for something. Yep. Everybody knows they said something is wrong, something is off. And they're waiting for it to happen, and it, you know, this is what he's talking about. It says, uh, it continues to say, the presence of an unseen doom was felt. The hearts of men were stricken. Laughter was heard no more. Grief and wailing sounded throughout the land. Even the voices of children were stilled. They did not play together, but stood silent. Okay? Now, in Man chapter 6, verse 5, it says, the days of stillness were followed by a time where the noise of trumpeting and shrilling was heard in the heavens. The people became as frightened beasts without a herdsman, as asses when the lions prowl without their fold. Now, I don't know how many people out there, they read the Bible and the book of Hebrews. There's a scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter, I think it is in chapter 12. And if you read there in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, you're going to read something very interesting that I had never noticed until I started understanding this, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the destroyer, and I, was, I started reading the, the book of the Colburn. There's a portion there that talks about this very thing. It talks about, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, okay, verse 18, it says, For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. Verse 19, and the sound of a trumpet, there is the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they had that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as an animal touched the mountain, each shall be stoned or thrust through by a spear. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. This is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 21. This sight was so terrifying that even Moses was shaking and quaking. Okay? But it says here in verse 22, But you, okay, speaking to the redeemed, to the elect, you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, unto an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, and church of the firstborn, who are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaks, for if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice, listen to this, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore we, the elect, the children of God, receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear, for our God is consuming fire. Okay, I believed, I believe with all my heart that what the, uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews is writing about here, that the children of Israel and Moses experienced there at that time was the passing of the destroyer. Because they, uh, remember they escaped Egypt. 
but they were, you know, going on their way to Mount Sinai. And so <clears throat> during all this trek, during all their, their travel there, this thing, this event was ensuing, okay? Because it doesn't happen in one day. It takes a while. So we see this thing confirmed. We see there's so many things here. It talks about it talks about um, uh, right here in the book of man uh, in the chapter of man chapter six verse eleven. It says dust and smoke clouds darkened the sky and colored the waters upon which they fell with a bloody hue. There you go. It turns the water uh, reddish like blood. It says plague was throughout the the land. Now this is confirmed in the book of Revelation chapter eight verse eight. And through verse ten, okay, about the water, the water turning into blood. The water was vile, and men's stomachs shrank from drinking. The water was contaminated. Okay, this is why in the book of Revelation it talks about that when this thing, when this comes, and all this dust, and all this material, and all this debris falls upon the the waters and the rivers and the sea. Is going to kill one third of the birds, one third of the animals, and one third of mankind, because the waters are going to be contaminated. Now, this was shown to me in another vision. If you go to our website, you're going to see that when I uh, the vision of the spiral. If you go to that the vision of the spiral, you're going to see that is basically what the Lord showed me. In that vision of the spiral, I saw this thing. I saw the uh, the spiral, and uh, what I saw. What I what I was told when I was seeing this was that it was contaminating the uh, you know everything where it was falling. It was like a radioactive uh, contamination. I'm not sure if that is what it's going to be, but that is what I felt it was. That it was just a spreading radioactive contamination. It was making the waters bitter. It was it was contaminating the waters, and uh, it's going to happen whenever this object comes. It turns the water uh, bitter, and it will it will contaminate the waters. And uh, it says also here the same thing in the culprit. Um, it talks about in chapter six, verse twelve, in, in the in the in the manuscript, the book of manuscripts. It talks about the dust. It says tore wounds in the skin of man and beast. Okay. In other words, when this when this material, this dust, falls. From, uh, you know, from the sky up on the earth, is going to fall upon the skin of animals, the skin of people, and it's going to produce sores. It's going to open wounds in the skin. This is exactly what the Bible talks about during the Exodus. That was one of the plagues. Open sores in the animals, open sores in the cattle, open sores in the people. Uh, this is exactly what he talks about also in the book of Revelation, chapter um, you know, uh, I, I think it's chapter 6, verse 8. And also there's uh, other scriptures in the book of Revelation during the trumpet judgments and during the, uh, the, the bold judgments, the vile judgments. It talks about uh, sores uh, coming upon people's skin, okay? A source appearing uh, on the people. This is, again, a, a product of this passage, of the passage of the destroyer, all this dust and all this material falling from the sky upon the people. It says here in, the, in that same chapter 6, verse 12, the wild beasts were afflicted with torments under the lashing sand and the ashes. Uh, they came out of their lairs in the wastelands and the cave places, and they stalked the abodes of men. What does the book of Revelation say? One of the, um, of the horsemen of the apocalypse, remember? It says the wild beasts, okay? It says the wild beasts are going to turn on mankind. Well, this is exactly what the book of the Colbrin says, that the wild beasts are going to turn, uh, uh, or that they turn on mankind back then. They came out of their caves, they came out of their places, and they began to attack people. Uh, in another chapter there, it talks about... Um, he talks about uh, the fish, okay, in, in chapter 6, verse, verse 14, in that Colburn, in the book of manuscripts, says the fish of the river died in the polluted waters. The worms, the insects, the reptiles, sp 
sprang up from the earth in huge numbers. Great gusts of wind brought swarms of locusts, which covered the sky. Okay? Again, that is one of the plagues during the Exodus, the plague of the locusts. Most people listening to this remember there is uh, mentioned a plague of locusts. Okay? Again, this is confirming exactly what the book of Exodus tells us happened during the Exodus. And this is being told from the side of the Egyptians, okay? This is being told from their point of view. And uh, it confirms everything that is written there in the Bible. Uh, now, in that same chapter, it goes on to say, and this is very interesting what he says here. He says, as the destroyer flung itself across the heavens, it blew great gusts of cinders across the face of the land. Okay? Remember that scripture in the Bible where it says that large uh, hail mingled with fire. Okay? I believe that is the first trumpet. Uh, hail mingled with fire. It fell on the earth. Okay? And one third of the earth was burnt. Okay? I believe this is what this is uh, referring to here in the, in the book of the Colburn. Uh, it talks about also the gloom of a long night spread a dark mantle of blackness which extinguished Listen to this. Every ray of light. No one knew when it was day and when it was night. For the sun cast no shadow. The darkness, it says, was not the clean blackness of night, but a thick darkness in which the breath of man was stopped in their throats. Man gasped in a hot cloud of vapor, which enveloped all the land and snuffed out all lamps and fires. Okay, now, this is incredible, what I just spoke here, because this is exactly what the Lord showed me, and it is recorded here in the book of the Colburn. Okay? He talks about a darkness, Doug and Joe, that is so, so powerful, it's, it's not normal. It's not normal darkness. He says, it, it says so here, that the darkness was not the clean blackness or the clean darkness of a night. But it was a thick darkness in which the breath of men was stopped in their throats. It, it's, a, it's a darkness that could be felt. If you read the book of Exodus, if you read the book of Exodus in chapter 10, verse 21 to 23, it talks about this darkness. And he says it is a darkness that could be felt. It was not normal darkness, but it was a darkness that could be felt. Again, the same thing that Colbert is talking about. And it's the same thing that the Father showed me. A darkness that I could feel. A great darkness. Now, this darkness is associated with the passing of the destroyer. I don't, I don't know, I don't understand what, is going, what causes this darkness, okay? I don't, I don't understand it all. But I believe it has something to do with this object, whether it is, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't explain it because I don't know. But I know it's caused by this object. Whenever it's passed, it causes this blackness. It causes this gross darkness to come upon the earth. And, um, and so, you know, this is spoken of in the Revelation chapter 16, verse 10, Revelation chapter 8, verse 8, Exodus chapter 10. Verse 21 through 23, I mean, it's, it's all over the scriptures. He talks about whirlpools, okay? In, the, in, the, in, chapters, in, chapters, in the Colbrin, chapter 6, verse 15, he talks about uh, whirlpools, okay, in the sea. He talks about ships that were sucked away from the moorings and destroyed in great whirlpools, okay? Now, this has been happening. These whirlpools have begun to take place on the planet in the last couple of years, okay? It continues. I mean, I mean, it goes on and on and on. It talks about the whole planet being filled with an uproar like a thunder from the destroyer, sounds coming from the earth, sounds coming from the, from the heavens. It talks about chaos. It talks about all these things. It, there is a chapter here. It refers to Moses. I'm going to read that so that people, uh, you know, they can know that this, this uh, book of the Colbrin, it talks exactly the same thing that the, the Bible talks about, but they are looking at it from their different point of view, from a different angle. It says, 
the slaves, okay, in chapter 6, verse 24, it says the slaves were spared by the destroyer. Okay? The slaves spared by the destroyers left the accursed land <laughs> forthwith, forthwith. Their multitude moved in the gloom of a half dawn under a mantle of fine swirling gray ash, leaving the burned fields and shattered, shattered cities behind them. Many Egyptians attached themselves to the host. Remember the, 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 uh, in the chapter about the Exodus in the Bible? He talks about some of the Egyptians attached themselves to the, uh, you know, to, to the Jews and to the Israelites as they were leaving Egypt. And they, you know, uh, they, uh, afterwards they, they rebelled against Moses, but he, he mentions that. It's, it talks about, it says here in the Colburn, for one who was great, it says, one who was great led them forth, a priest prince of the inner courtyard. Well, that's referring to Moses. See, the Colbrin doesn't call him Moses. He calls him a great leader. Okay, was leading them. A great prince. A priest prince of the inner courtyard. Of course, we know, if, we, if you read the Bible, you know that Moses was trained in the court of Pharaoh. He was trained in the court of Pharaoh. He was, going to, he was being trained to become Pharaoh. Okay? Right. And of course, right. you know the story. He, uh, he left after he killed an Egyptian, and he went into exile for 40 years. So this... Colbrin basically confirms everything that the Bible says, everything. It doesn't contradict the Bible in any way, in no way. It completely, completely confirms it. And, uh, Chris, can I ask you yeah. this? Um, there are a lot of people that have problems with the extra-biblical text. And sure. uh, I mentioned I've, I've read the book of Enoch. I have not found anything that contradicts... Uh, anything in the Bible, actually, it, to me, further explained a lot. Um, and how did, and when you're working with these extra books, and, and I tell people this, I would say this to anybody, uh, you know, the Bible is the Bible. Um, it is what it is. Right. The ultimate authority, the ultimate person to seek for truth is the Lord through prayer and your relationship with him. How, uh, these books, whether it be the book of Enoch or uh, whatever um, book it is, do you look at these as an as a historical perspective, um, or does it differ be, uh, by the book? Um, because it seems yeah, a lot of people I look at have it as a historical perspective. I do not, uh, you know, I do not get into the uh, theological uh, aspects of it. Of course, uh, it's like everything. One of the things that the Lord taught me when he brought me out of uh, the system, you know, uh, of the church, and um, he trained me for several years here where I live now, and he had to basically, you know, deprogram my hard drive, you know, from all of the leaven of, of that I had been contaminated with, and he had to download fresh new revelation, new mana, new rema. And one of the things he showed me is, I'm going to lead you by my spirit. And uh, I'm going, everything that is not truth, okay, I'm going to show it to you. Everything that contradicts the Bible is not of me. Everything that confirms the Bible, even though it may add some things that are not there, but it confirms it in every way. And you feel the confirmation in your spirit, that is of me. And uh, okay. the Bible, everything in the Bible uh, is absolutely true. It is 100% truth, everything that's in the Bible. But not everything that is truth has been included in the, in the canon of the Bible. There are many yeah. books, like the Book of Enoch, for example. The Book of Enoch is mentioned in the Bible. It's mentioned yes. twice. It's mentioned yep. in the Book of Jude, and it's mentioned in the Book of uh, Second Peter. One, yes. uh, in, the, in, the, in the Book of Jude, it mentions it verbatim, uh, word for word. It quotes he quotes from the book of Enoch. It also talks about, the, the, the Bible talks twice about the book of uh, Jasher, yet we don't have the book of Jasher in the Bible. Okay? So there are many things that, for some reason, uh, the early church fathers had access to and, and we don't have access to. So my recommendation to the people is, uh, you know, extra biblical books are basically that, extra biblical books. If you read them, and it confirms what it says in the Scripture, you know, then take it. 
spit out the spit out the bones and eat the meat. I don't recommend it for uh, newly born babies in Christ. I do not recommend it for the weak in the faith. I do not recommend it for those that uh, uh, believe that it may harm them. I don't. I don't recommend it. But if you are a mature, seasoned uh, person in the in the Lord, you know your scriptures well. You have a strong foundation, and you want more. You want to confirm some of these things. This is what I'm talking about here. Okay, this will confirm it because this object that is coming. Uh, you know, you're not going to find, uh, if, if you don't have access to some of this material, many of these uh, scriptures that I just shared with you in the Bible, they're not going to make any sense. And this is what is happening right now. There's many preachers out there, and they are preaching about the book of Revelation as if it were, you know, uh, a super spiritual book. They are spiritualizing everything. Everything in the book of Revelation is being spiritualized. In other words, it's not going to happen like it says there. And the hell is, is spiritualized, and all these things are spiritualized, and it's a mess. I mean, <laughs> there's, it's a mess out there. So the Lord has led me, okay, by His Spirit, to many of these truths. And the people that are, are listening to this program tonight, if you have the Spirit of the Lord, and you're hearing these things, you know that this is the truth. Because I've been telling you with Scripture, I've been proving it with the Bible, and I've been sharing it with facts that are happening right now. So you're getting it from Scripture in the Bible, you're getting it from an extra-biblical source, the Book of the Colburn, and you're getting it from things that are happening right now. Now, another thing that it says here, uh, Joe, is that uh, when, this, uh, when this object was coming by, and this is going to tie into my just recent trip to, to uh, Honduras, okay? Uh, the earth began to open, and it began to swallow people, okay? It began to swallow people. People began to fall into the cracks that were opening in the earth, and fire began to come out from under the earth, okay? This is what it talks about here in the, in the Colbrin. Now, when I was just in Honduras, okay, I went to this school, which, by the way, was a tremendous uh, victory, tremendous blessing for the Lord, a public school that I was allowed to visit and minister to the people there, the young people. I was allowed to talk about Jesus Christ. I was allowed to give an altar call. It was, it was wonderful. I, I had another opportunity also to talk to the parents of the children, over 200 of them, I prayed for many of them. Anyways... When I was there in the school, I, I was going to share some scriptures with them about, you know, uh, from the Bible. But the Spirit of the Lord uh, placed in my heart that instead I should share my testimony of how the Lord saved me. And uh, so I did. I shared how the Lord had called me, how he, uh, you know, he spoke to me in the middle of the night, and the experiences that he gave me how I was saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and anyway, I shared with them the whole story. After I finished, I felt that there was one of the young people there, I felt that had a dream or a vision from God that they needed to share. And so I, I, just, I just asked them, I said, is there anyone here that has received something from the Lord that, you know, you, and you want to share it? Raise your hand. And um, one girl in the back raised her hand, and I asked her, you know, I asked her to come forward. So she came to the front, and um, I asked her to share. I asked her to share what she had seen, what she had received, and her experience. Well, the minute she began to open her mouth, that whole place became quiet, like you could hear a pin drop. So quiet that you could hear a pin drop. And um, as this as she began to share what you know her experience, she began to share how she had seen Jesus. Jesus had appeared to her. She told the young people there, she said, I was a devil. I was totally diabolical. But I, uh, I, I, I came to Jesus Christ. I gave him my life. He said, and then she went on to say, why? She said, he appeared to me. He appeared to me. And what I saw, she said, was like, was like the end. It was like the end. Everything was, everything was was 
was being destroyed. She said there were earthquakes. You know, she uh, we, we were near San Pedro Sula, which is the capital there in uh, Honduras, or the at least the 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 main commercial capital. Although the Gusigalpa is the you know the the legal capital, uh, San Pedro Sula is the you know the real capital. That's where the money, all the money is, and all the industries. And she said that in San Pedro Sula was being shaken. There was earthquakes taking place. Now, when I was there, Doug and Joe, during this last trip, uh, about two or three weeks ago, I experienced an earthquake. I was there in La Lima, and I was sitting there having lunch with the, with the pastors, and an earthquake took place, a 5.5 earthquake. And I believe this was a symbolic, this was prophetic from the, from the Lord to me and to them, because I was sharing with them some of these same, same things I'm sharing with you tonight, okay? And I believe this was to let them know and let me know that the Lord was confirming this thing. And anyways, as this young girl began to share, she said that she saw Jesus, and uh, as, as San Pedro Sula was being destroyed, earthquakes were happening, the earth was, was opening up, there were cracks appearing on the earth, she said that um, that she saw Jesus and he was crying. She saw tears coming down his cheeks. And uh, she asked him, why are you crying, Jesus? Why are you crying? And he looked at her and said, because I cannot stop it. I cannot do anything about it. And the people started to fall down the cracks. They started to fall through the cracks that uh, were appearing on the ground, Okay. Fire began to come from under the ground, okay? Flames of fire began to come from under. The people began to fall. And she said that uh, as, as, as she was watching this, chariots of fire began to appear, and they began to land in different places. And the people, she called them the elect, okay? The people of God, the elect, began to get on these chariots of fire. They began to board the chariots of fire. And as they, as they got into the chariots of fire, they were changed. She said that they became like angels. She said that they became bigger, taller, more beautiful, more powerful. They became brilliant, full of light. And she said that she called upon Jesus and said, Jesus, please save me. I don't want to die here. Save me. And that's when she gave her heart to the Lord. And she said that many people were trying to get on those chariots of fire, but they were not able to. They would fall through the cracks, through those uh, cracks that kept opening up everywhere, with flames coming down from under the earth. And, and, and you know, that was the end of the testimony. She woke up. And uh, I gave an altar call after that, after, after she finished. And over 20 young people came to the altar and gave their lives to Jesus Christ that day. And I have, the, of course, I have the photos there on our website on, uh, on our recent trip, missionary trip to Honduras. And the Lord did many, many wonderful things there. But Praise God. I just wanted to share that tonight with you and the audience because this is exactly what I read here in the Colbrain. It, it's, it's there. And this girl doesn't know anything about the Colbrain. She doesn't even know <laughs> that it exists. And she described exactly the effects of this object when it comes, what it's going to do, okay? It causes this exact same things that she saw, because it's recorded here from when the, it passed the last time during the Exodus. And, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, it's in the Bible. Does not the Bible say that the earth also opened up and swallowed a whole bunch of people that rebelled against Moses? It's, it's right there. It's right there That's in the Bible. True. Yeah. So, you know, these things, these things that I'm sharing with you tonight, I'm sharing with you because uh, I believe that all of this is tied together. Going back to what I shared in the first couple of hours, uh, this is all tied together, Doug and Joe. It's all tied together. Uh, this is going to be, this is the reason why these people are doing what they're doing. This is what they're preparing for, okay, to, in, to, uh, to implement their new world order. They believe that they they believe, okay, in their deluded minds that when all this mess happens and it's over, that is when they're going to uh, 
you know, to implement their new world order. The, for example, the 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 Georgia Guidestones. What does what does it say there? To maintain the population of the Earth at five hundred million. Right. Okay. It doesn't say to to destroy everybody else, and you know, until there's only five hundred. It says to maintain. They are expecting. These people are expecting massive uh, deaths on planet Earth. Okay. They got the seed vault over there in the near the Arctic. Why do they have the seed vault? Why, 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 what in heaven, why in the name of heaven would they have such a structure over there by the, you know, near the North Pole, in one of those uh, areas, a seed vault containing all the seeds that you could possibly imagine. And by the way, that seed vault was sealed. It was shut down. It was sealed. I think it was in 2011, at the end of 2011. So what are they preparing for? What, what, are they, what do they know that they're not sharing? What do they need that seed vault for? You see, so we have all these loose ends that nobody seems to tie up. And it is all pointing to the same thing. The arrival of some trigger, something that is going to be uh, the end of civilization as we know it. It's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of civilization as we know it, where chaos will reign for a season. There will be massive plagues, massive, uh, massive upheavals, massive uh, civil disorder. Okay, people will go crazy. And I believe this is what the nations of the earth are preparing for. They are preparing for massive, massive upheaval, massive chaos. This is why I believe you're seeing all these bullets being, uh, the ammo being purchased. I believe you're seeing the the, the, the the MREs being bought. I believe you're seeing the bunkers being built. I believe you're seeing all these limitations and the laws being passed to control the populations of the earth. Because when these things happen, uh, they're going to need to keep the, uh, if you will, the uh, the government, okay, uh, the continuance of government, okay, some semblance of normalcy, normality. But it's going to be impossible. It's not going to be possible. If what I see and what the, what the Lord has shown me and what I have read in the scriptures is true, it's not going to happen. Wow. And so, you know, this is what we're expecting. But to the people that belong to Jesus, okay, and, 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 and here is the, the good part, to the people that belong to him, the Lord has also shown me, Doug and, and Joe, that he will take care of those that are his. Because just like he took care of his people in, in Egypt, in the land of Goshen, it, sa- it, it says right here in the Colbrin, and he says so in the Bible, none of his people were hurt. Not one of them perished. Okay, But in order for that to happen, and, and, this, is, uh, uh, and this is one of the last things, uh, one of the last things I'm going to share tonight. Okay, Remember what the Lord told Moses. They had to do some things. He asked them to do something. Okay? Remember, he, he spoke about the destroyer was going to pass. It's in the Bible. He called it the destroyer. He said, get inside your house, lock the door, don't come out. Take the lamb inside the house. The lamb represents Jesus Christ. Take the lamb inside the house. The lamb must, must be without spot or wrinkle. Remember, it had to be perfect. But Jesus was the perfect lamb. So that is symbolic of Jesus. Okay, so we have to take Jesus inside our home, inside our house, inside our physical house, but also inside our physical body. The house in the Bible, when it talks about the house, okay, it talks about our, our, our physical body. Okay, so you have to take Jesus Christ inside your heart, inside your body, inside your, your life. You have to take him, you have to accept him, you have to make him your Lord and Savior. Okay, so that's number one. Number two The Lord told Moses that they had to kill the lamb. Jesus, of course, was already killed. He was sacrificed on the cross. He said, you have to take the blood from the sacrificed lamb and apply it to the doorpost and the dentals of your house, okay, as a symbol. And when the the destroyer comes by, okay, when the angel of death comes by, he will not enter your house. Well, the same thing. We do. We do the same exact thing. We accept Jesus Christ. 
into our lives, okay? If you're listening to me and you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you need to accept him. You need to give him your life. You need to make him your Lord and Savior, okay? That is what it means to take the lamb inside your house. Then you have to take the blood that he shed, okay? The shed blood of Jesus Christ, the, the, you know, the Jews took the blood of the lamb and they applied it outside the house to the doorpost and the dentals. Well, we don't apply it to the doorpost and the dentals. We apply it to our hearts. We apply it to our mind. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our family. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our children. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our property. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to everything that belongs to us. Okay? Starting with us. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? And the Lord told Moses that if you do this, Okay? You will be preserved. You will suffer no, no damage. You will not be hurt. And I believe with all of my heart that the same is going to apply today to those that belong to Him, to Jesus Christ, to the Lord. If you accept Him, you bring Jesus into your house, you bring the Lamb into your house, and you apply the blood of the Lamb unto your life, unto your, unto your heart, unto your loved ones. Okay? You lose the blood of Jesus on your children. You lose the blood of Jesus on your loved ones. You lose the blood of Jesus on the, on the home, on your, on, your, on, your, on your business, on your car, and everything that belongs to you. You apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Many of these horrific things that are going to happen, they will not touch you. They will not come near you. And even if you live in a dangerous area, I believe the Lord will send his angel to take you out of there. If you're still there, if you move out, then praise God. If he tells you to get out of that specific area where you are, he's shown you that area is not safe, then you do that. You obey him. But um, I believe the Lord will protect those that are his. And um, I believe that this message is so important, Joe and and Doug, that I, I was so looking forward to sharing this because this thing is imminent. This thing is about to happen. I'm not setting dates, but I'm telling you, this thing is about to happen. And so uh, you got to make preparations right now. And I mean spiritual preparations. All the other stuff, sure, you, you buy your food and you buy your, you know, your, 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 whatever it is that the Lord has told you to do, you take care of that, okay? All your supplies, you take care of that. But you need to make spiritual preparations now because this will save you. If you do not... The Lord has shown me this. If you do not prepare, like I'm telling you, spiritually, you will not make it. You will not make it. This thing is going to destroy a lot. I mean, it's called a destroyer. (laughs) It's called a destroyer for a reason. It will destroy everything. It will destroy water supplies. It will destroy food supplies. It will destroy uh, cattle. It will destroy uh, animal life. It will destroy trees. It will destroy everything. And so only those that are marked by the Lord, they are sealed by the blood of the Lamb, by the Lord himself, will make it. Okay? And so I just want to leave you with that word. I just want to encourage you to uh, not be afraid. This is not uh, to make you afraid. This is to make you prepared, to make you aware. Because this is so close now. Those that, of us that know the Lord, we're going to see incredible things. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see angelic, uh, um, uh, angelic uh, manifestations. The angels are going to be very active. I believe that's what the Lord meant when he told me there's a lot of activity taking place in heaven right now when he told me about the darkness. So, yes, the darkness is coming, but the presence of God is coming. The glory of God is also coming, and he's coming to help his people. He's coming to prepare his people. Do not be afraid. Yes, the finances may collapse. Yes, the, uh, the economy may collapse. Yes, the, we may be attacked by nuclear devices. Yes, the terrorists may do their thing. Yes, uh, there may be a war that explodes in the Middle East. Yes, all these things may happen and probably will happen. But those that belong to the Lord, they shall be preserved. Okay? They shall be preserved if you follow him and you listen to these words. And even if you don't make it, okay, if you belong to him, even if you are killed, even if you don't make it, you'll be immediately in the presence of the Lord. 
Okay? To be out of the body is to be present with the Lord. And so this is the hope that we have. And many people are listening tonight that you may even belong to the other side. You may belong to the dark side. The Lord is pleading with you tonight. Please, repent. Change. Make it right. Give your life to Jesus Christ. He's the only hope. There's no other way out of this. Okay? There's nowhere to hide. There is nowhere to hide. You cannot hide in your bunkers. Your bunkers are not going to protect you. There's nowhere to hide. So trust in what I've shared with you tonight, because I'm sharing this because I care. I really care for people out there. And I want you to get saved. I want you to make it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I just pray. I loose the angels of the Lord upon the people listening tonight. I lose the power of the blood of Jesus Christ upon everyone listening tonight. I, Father, I pray that they turn their hearts around and that they repent of their sins, that they will cause their hearts, Lord, to be after you, Lord, that they will humble themselves, Lord, and cause, Lord, the, the, the spirit of, of repentance to come upon them, that they will give their hearts to you, Lord, tonight, and that they will see the truth in what I'm sharing them, Lord, what I'm sharing with them, Father, that they, that they will not allow the enemy to take the seed that I have planted, Lord, out of their hearts but that they will listen, that they will listen to what I have been sharing tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you touch the people, Lord, that you cause them to repent, that you cause them to be made whole, that you cause them, Lord, to be saved by the blood of the Lamb, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, and I give you thanks, and I give you praise, Father, and I thank you, Father, for Doug and and Joe Hagman, Lord, for the wonderful work that they're doing, Lord, with this radio ministry, Lord, and how they're warning the people, Father. I pray your blessing be upon them, your blessing be on the Hagman and Hagman show, Lord, that the enemy will not touch them, Lord. I pray that you bless them, Lord, that you will supply all their needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that they will not, Lord, uh, allow, uh, that they will not suffer, Lord, uh, uh, the, the, the persecution, Lord, that I know they're under continual persecution. I pray that they will not be scarred and that they will be protected, that their family will be protected, Father, and that they will be encouraged and strengthened to continue, Lord, and to endure to the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, because great shall be your reward, Doug, and great shall be your reward, Joe. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll amen. tell you, Mr. Perez, what a fantastic show. You, you've you tied up loose ends. You've really laid it out there. And I think people need to hear. And, and folks, um, download a copy of, of this broadcast and share it with someone you care about. So much has been said tonight. And, and Mr. Perez, I'm going to thank you because your, your mission statement, your only desire is to glorify Jesus Christ. You've got a, definitely a rare blend of humility and, and uh, the power of the Spirit manifesting in your life and your ministry, and we want to thank you for that. And thank you for sharing. I know you're a busy man. You've taken three out or three hours out of your time to be with us tonight, and we're very humbled and blessed to have had this time with you. Um, it's powerful, and uh, you, you know I felt touched by the Spirit today. Uh, when we talked earlier, I know now why, and, and I'm thankful, Mr. Perez, that we had this time together tonight, because who knows how long we have. Yes, sir. Well, I, I, I appreciate you having me, uh, Doug and Joe, on such a short notice, and um, I, I believe that and hope that some of the things I shared uh, uh, were meant uh, to, to help you. Uh, I believe that also some of the loose ends that, that uh, I helped to tie tonight uh, will help our listeners out there. And uh, I know that a lot of people have many questions. And so if this was uh, a help to someone out there, I, I consider this show a, a complete success. And uh, thank you again, both of you. Mr. Perez, God bless you. Thank you. Stay safe. Until next time, uh, j j just God bless you. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. We hope the next time sooner than later, Mr. Perez. God bless you. Thank you God so bless much, you, Mr. Joel Perez. And All right. Take care. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Augusto Perez. Uh, visit his website at theappearance.com. That's theappearance.com. What a tremendous man. Um, really, from the heart, um, I certainly felt uh, moved in the spirit uh, by, with, by what he was saying. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, you know, we, we look at the news, the headlines show, you and I, we, we go over everything, every all this analysis. And uh, without the... Without the uh, um, benefit of biblical without looking at this through uh you know the, the the prism of scripture it really doesn't make any sense but boy did did mr perez make a lot of sense tonight you know he really did so i just have to i just have to say it was just a fantastic the way that, the way that it was set up that he came on tonight uh, was no accident. Ninety seconds. No, not For at those all. of you who missed the very beginning of the show, go back and listen to the first ten minutes and listen to how this was. Yeah, either uh, a ridiculous coincidence, which I believe not, or no, a divine uh, nudge, which I believe is the case. And, and, uh, and, and th- 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 that's pretty much how we've been living our lives with just a number of divine nudges. I just want to say too, we have a. Uh, uh, a group of people li- uh, listening in, 60 in, seconds. Uh, in real time in Afghanistan. I want to thank you for your service, and uh, God bless you folks, you men and women over there. And I want to thank all the listeners. Uh, I've been getting some emails from people locally. Uh, Tim at the airport. Uh, a few others from Erie. Uh, reach Very out good. to us, letting us know that they're listening. If you are in Erie and listening, definitely get a hold of us. Uh, send us an email. We really appreciate it. And God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe tonight, and God willing, we will be here at the same time tomorrow. Good night, everyone.